Hello, and welcome to the third edition of Nittany Watch. I'm Brianna Proudnoy White. And I'm Mitchell Carson. Nittany Watch is our student produced digital magazine bringing you news, sports, and information from Penn State Harrisburg and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in depth look at the people, places, and events that make Penn State Harrisburg and the Susquehanna Valley a great place to call home. On today's show, we'll catch you up with the latest news from Thon. We'll also take a peek at the new rides coming to Hershey Park. And Casey Blask will join us for his sports report. But first, let's introduce you to... Brianna, you look funny. What? You don't have a mask on. Oh, right. It is kind of weird to see your face. Here's reporter <laughs> Charlie Kukowski with more on, or should I say less, on the updated mask policy. This past Wednesday, Penn State University has lifted its mask mandate completely and the testing restrictions. Many students are very excited about that. Let's hear what they have to say. I am incredibly happy, but wish it would have came way earlier. Uh, having the mask mandate is kind of nice to have that like, removed now because honestly, like with everything going on, like it wasn't really necessary. Initially, Penn State only removed the mask mandate in certain areas, leaving many students confused. With the school removing the mandate on March 7th of like just outdoor settings and then a couple indoor settings with like whether it be like the gym, cafeteria, and like the hallways, but then all of a sudden you had to like still wear it in the classrooms. It's like does COVID just attack you in the classrooms? Like, while it wasn't the best handling of the pandemic, many students believe Penn State dealt with it in a better way than any other organizations. Penn State, compared to my former school, Dickinson, took way better approach to COVID. With the masks aside, we can all focus on other things with a beautiful smile in the process. I'm Charlie Krakowski with Penn State Harrisburg Student Media. While we're on the topic of new faces, Dr. Yonatan Tawilde is a new face here at Penn State Harrisburg and has been a wonderful addition to the communications program since joining back in the fall of 2021. He has inspired his students with his works in photography and videography. Now we go to Nittany Watch's very own Casey Blask, who had an opportunity to sit down and talk with Dr. Tawilde. Dr. Tawilde joined the Penn State community in the fall of 2021 and has since made a positive impact on his students. I want my students to uh, be knowledgeable in terms of concepts that are required for today's media industry. Dr. Tawilde expresses the importance of photography and videography to the field of communications and strives to make sure his students are well versed in the technical aspect as well as the creation aspect of communications. And I'm also very much driven to make sure that my students have the technical ability in terms of how to take um, photographs, how to edit them, if they're students of photography and those who are studying video, I want them to be able to produce uh, different types of video contents. Photography is very important in the field of communication, both as, um, both as a medium that can support um, a narrative storytelling. So whether we are thinking about um, about about news writing in journalism, or whether we're th thinking about magazine uh, feature stories, um, or even like when we're thinking about websites and even television, yeah. uh, photography and videography bring that visual element to our storytelling. Dr. Tualde is originally from the country of Eritrea, which is located in Northeast Africa. He would go on to study in Germany and Turkey, earning his master's in communications and completing graduate programs in intercultural communications. He then would eventually move to the U.S. in 2015 and earned another master's in mass communications and production at Ohio University. In my country, Eritrea, I was, you know, as I told you, I studied journalism and mass communication mm -hmm. uh, for my undergrads, and I was hoping to end up working as a journalist. But um, if you know anything about Eritrea, it is one of the worst countries in terms of uh, freedom of press, or a lot of journalists routinely get thrown to jail. Mm -hmm. So it came to a point where all private press were shut down and you know, a lot of their, many, most of their journalists were uh, jailed, right? So it became very unsafe for me to continue that profession. Mm -hmm. And then I had, I had uh, good grades when I was graduating um, from, from college. So I applied for a graduate assistantship position in the university and I was accepted. And then that way I started to, to teach journalism. So it was a matter of safety for me to choose teaching than practice in Eritrea. And then that way, you know, one thing led to the other and then I did my grad studies and then, yeah. you know, Dr. Tawilde continues to teach here at Penn State Harrisburg and is currently planning another photo exhibit with his students. When he is not teaching, he enjoys playing soccer with his two sons and watching his favorite TV shows. Reporting for Nittany Watch, 
This is Casey Blask. We are lucky to have a professor like Dr. Tawildi here at PSH. We'll be right back after this message. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Please don't say that. Please don't say that. Your brother suffered critical head trauma, extensive cerebral hemorrhaging. We did everything we could. I'm sorry we couldn't save him. It's all my fault. Shouldn't have driven. You should have left the driving to someone else. The test showed a significant level of alcohol in your blood. We've contacted your family. They should be arriving shortly. Have you ever wondered if there was something on campus that you didn't realize actually existed? Well, the Center for Holocaust and Jewish Studies may be one of those things. Matthew Wincoop gives an update on the center and what it is. The Center for Holocaust and Jewish Studies is a Penn State Harrisburg attraction that focuses on educating students about the Holocaust. Inside the Madeline L. Haynes Library, you will find the Linda Schwab Holocaust Reading Center. It is on the first floor to the left next to the main desk. Many different things can be found in this room. Pictures from the Holocaust, accompanied by descriptions, can be seen to the left. Students can learn about the Holocaust just by reading about the images. A professor at Penn State Harrisburg and the director of the Center for Holocaust and Jewish Studies, Neil Leifer, provided some insight into what the center is and provided some interesting information about the Holocaust. Well, it's an outreach organization on campus. Uh, we reach out to the public with programs of interest, obviously with Jewish themes. We bring in scholars, authors. We also bring in concerts, performers. A lot of the lectures have to do, of course, with the Holocaust and Jewish history, anti-Semitism, Jewish culture. And we also bring in things like this. Now we are currently in the library and we have this exhibit which uh, you may see behind me it's an exhibit donated to us by a gentleman in new york who came hither to these wonderful photographs and the uh, history of a particular event in uh, nazi germany under hitler where uh, jews were trained as farmers something that very few people are aware of actually happened under the Nazis. And a lot of Jews went through this program and were able to emigrate to other countries where they could take these skills and thereby survive the Holocaust. Uh, the uh, purpose is to bring all of this information to the general public. Our programs, although they have a Jewish theme, they are open to everybody and they do relate to everybody uh, generally. So we bring this to campus, uh, the campus staff, faculty, students. One of the events held this semester was a performance by Susan Leviton, a Harrisburg native. This performance took place in the Kokarni Theater in the Student Enrichment Center. During her performance, Susan sang and read aloud her stories. Her dialogue was accompanied by images relating to the content she was discussing. Examples of Jewish music were also played for the audience. Susan Leviton's performance is just one example of the events. Neil Leifert gave more details about previous and future events regarding the center. Well, actually, we have one more event this semester, and that uh, is a lecture by Neil Bascom. He's a writer and author who will be delivering a lecture via webinar. And uh, I am uh, preparing our program for the fall. For Penn State Harrisburg Student Media, I am Matthew Wincoop. For more information, contact Neil Leifert at nhl101 at psu.edu 
or through the center email chjs at psu.edu. Students can also visit the center's website by searching it on the official Penn State Harrisburg site. Hey Mitch, have you ever been to Hershey Park? Of course, it's right near campus, and I've gone there on a trip with Pac before. <laughs> well, Hershey Park opens new attractions pretty frequently, and they've made big announcements. Reporter Shayna McLaren is in Hershey to get us all the delicious details. Hello everyone, I'm here at Hershey Park to share some exciting news. Fittingly announced on February 22nd, Hershey Park will be gaining two new attractions based on the Jolly Rancher brand of hard candies. The new coaster, Jolly Rancher Remix, will be one of 15 coasters currently in the park. It's a boomerang coaster, meaning it goes forward and backward on the same track and will have six inversions. Even though it's on the same track, each ride on Jolly Rancher Remix will be different. There are five different combinations of music, lights, and scents to create a unique experience based on a flavor of Jolly Ranchers, like green apple or watermelon. Also coming to the park is Mixed Flavored by Jolly Rancher, a more family-friendly ride. The ride will spin riders forward and backward in multiple different circular motions. It will also give people previously unseen views of the surrounding area and attractions. Both Jolly Rancher Remix and Mixed Flavored by Jolly Rancher will be opening this summer in the Pioneer Frontier area of the park. The new attractions will also be steps away from the boardwalk, Hershey Park's 11-acre water park, which is included in the ticket price. Both rides will be subject to height restrictions for safety. Jolly Rancher Remix will have a height restriction of 48 inches, meaning those in the Hershey, Twizzler, and Jolly Rancher height categories can ride. Mixed by Jolly Rancher will have a height restriction of 42 inches, covering those in the Reese's height category and above. The last major addition to Hershey Park was the redesign of its entrance, now known as the Chocolate Town section of the park. Construction on Chocolate Town started at the start of 2020, and it opened in the summer of 2021. Major features of the redesign include a brand new retail store, the Sweetery Sweet Shop, Milton's Ice Cream Parlor, and the Chocolatier Restaurant and Bar. Those locations are accessible year-round, whether or not the park is open. The redesign also brought changes within the park by flattening the entrance and moving the carousel closer to the gates, as well as introducing Candemonium, currently the park's longest and fastest coaster. As you can tell, Jolly Ranchers thrilled by the new additions. Hershey Park will be opening for springtime in the park on April 2nd and will be open weekends until Memorial Day. At this time, we don't have an official opening date for Jolly Rancher Remix or Mixed Flavored by Jolly Rancher, but based on previous attraction openings, they're expected early in the summer season. For Nittany Watch, I'm Shana McLaren. Those rides look sweet. Mitch, do you plan on riding either of them? I'm not sure. I think I'd have to see them in action first. And Hershey Park will be open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays through April up to Memorial Day. Well, if you want to know more, you can find information about the new rides at HersheyPark.com. And if you're going to the park this year, you can download the Hershey Park app for wait times, food offerings, and other handy information. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. The spring semester is back and so are spring sports. Here's Casey Blask in his spring sports report. The Penn State Harrisburg baseball team is back in action after a spectacular 2021 season where they went 29-9 and won the formerly known NEAC championship. So far this season has been a little rough as the Lions are currently 6-10, but they have recently swept a three-game series against Penn State Abington to remain undefeated 3-0 in the United East Conference. Zach Geddes has made Penn State Harrisburg history by striking out 10 batters in a game against Christopher Newport to reach 207 career strikeouts, the most in program history. With such a historic outing, along with a six-out save in a 6-4 victory over a third-ranked Salisbury three days prior, Geddes would be named to the Penn State Harrisburg KMW Men's Performance of the Week. The Penn State team looks to play Wells College at home this Friday, March 25th at 3.30 p.m. Penn State softball is also back in action, boasting a 5-5 five five record that includes a four-game win streak. 
The Lions got hot after their season opening loss 8-5 to Gettysburg, stringing together wins against Keene, Eureka, St. Elizabeth, and Gwen and Mercy during their spring break classic in Myrtle Beach. Freshman Madeline Lehigh would lead the Lions over the four-game stretch, racking up 10 hits with a 500 batting average, 565 on base percentage, and a 650 slugging percentage to go along with 11 RBIs. Her outstanding performance would garner her a Penn State Harrisburg's K&W Women's Performance of the Week. The Lions are set to face off against Gallaudet this Friday, March 25th at 3 p.m. The Penn State Harrisburg men's tennis team opened its spring season with a solid 8-1 victory over, the, over York this past Sunday, March 20th, and now improved to 2-3 on the season. During their matchup against the Spartans, Penn State Harrisburg would go 3-3 three three in the doubles competition and drop only one singles match. The Lions started its season back in fall going 1-3, with its sole win being against Immaculata, 9-0. The men's tennis team now looks to get back at 500 record against St. Elizabeth at home this Sunday, March 26th at 11 a.m. The women's tennis team also started its season back up with a decisive victory over the York Spartans. The Lions went 2-3 for three in the doubles portion of the match and would win three of their singles matches to complete a 5-4 victory against York College. Since the women's season also started back in the fall, the team now holds a 2-4 record and is now looking to start a hot streak with their next game against St. Elizabeth at home this Sunday, March 26th at 11 a.m. Penn State Harrisburg men's basketball put the cap on a successful season, including a conference championship and a spot in the NCAA Division III tournament. Now we go to sports reporter Christopher Palm, who has the latest on the basketball team. Penn State Harrisburg men's basketball continued to prove their staying power heading into February atop the United East Conference standings. After suffering their recent loss to St. Mary's, the Harrisburg Lions returned home to the Cub to battle against Penn State Burks, bouncing back into dominating form and beating the Burks Lions by 50 points, their largest margin of victory in the season, with a score of 89 to 39. Donnie Baylor Carroll led the scoring effort with 18 points while Nate Curry recorded a double-double with 11 points and 11 rebounds. In their next game against Penn College, the action was tight throughout the first half, but the Lions were able to break through before halftime thanks to Brandon Coleman scoring four three-pointers. Coleman also led the team with 22 points in the bucket, along with Curry recording 18 points and six rebounds, Baylor Carroll with 12 points and six steals, and Chris Haynes adding 10 points off the bench. The Lions went on to win 79-61 over the Wildcats, completing another season sweep. The next day, the Lions would smell revenge in a home rematch against St. Mary's, which saw a lot of action on the court. As the team never gave up the lead all game long, Baylor Carroll led the effort, putting six three-pointers in the bucket to go with his 25 points, while Dylan Daniels recorded 17 points, seven rebounds, and seven blocks on the night. The Lions put the Seahawks down with a vengeance, resulting in an 81-53 win on an electric Thursday night at the Cub. Uh, we got big hopes. Uh, we feel like we got a great crew, and that uh, we just trying to, down the final stretch, compete and do what we do best. And we feel like we can compete with anybody. Heading into the final home game of the season, the Lions continued to put their performance to the test, going up against Gallaudet. Making his first start of the season, Pedro Rodriguez contributed to the scoring effort, putting 20 points in the net as the Lions finished their home season with a 90-57 win over Gallaudet. This is a time now where you know, we, we're not, we can't change up what we've done. We've got to stay, stay the course of what we've done. And we've got to go in there and really sharpen our skills, and be focused, and be super efficient. Finishing the regular season atop the conference standings and beating Lancaster Bible to win the United East Championship game the Lions earned an automatic berth in the NCAA Division III tournament. Putting both their defensive and shot-making efforts to the test, the Lions went on to upset top-ranked St. Joseph, Connecticut, 63-53 in the first round. Their season ended in a second-round loss to Worcester Polytechnic. Finishing the season at 24-4 overall, including an undefeated home record, a conference title, and a berth in the NCAA tournament, the Harrisburg Lions continue to prove their dominance moving forward. At the Capitol Union Building, I'm Christopher Paul for Penn State Harrisburg Student Media. After a successful return to play, the Harrisburg Lions look to continue the dominance heading into next season. Penn State Harrisburg women's basketball ended their season with a high note, ending their season going 16-9. Sports reporter Christopher Palm has the latest. <laughs> Uh, 
The Harrisburg Lions look to continue the season with optimism moving forward with back-to-back -back games against Penn State Burks, both home and away. Kendis Butler led the team scoring effort in the first game, putting 21 points in the bucket with Anna Mahan recording eight points in a game that saw new records set with the most points scored in a game, field goals and field goal percentage, 23 three-pointers, 33 assists, and 27 steals in the Harrisburg Lions' 112-35 win over Penn State Burks. In the second game, which was postponed from earlier in January, the Harrisburg Lions would complete the season sweep over Penn State Burks. Kendis Butler once again led the charge with 18 points scored in the 76-32 win over the Burks Lions. We weren't picked to win the conference necessarily, but we've had a few dominant wins and we're not letting that get to our heads. So I think we're just ready to compete and prove ourselves. The Harrisburg Lions returned to the Cub two days later in a face-off against Penn College. The game saw a close knit action in the first half. As the Lions got off to a slow start in the first quarter, they were able to claw their way back up to a three-point lead by the end of the second quarter. The team came out strong in the second half, with Jenna Montana scoring 15 points in the net with seven rebounds, while Anna Mahan also recorded seven rebounds to go with her 13 points. Candace Butler also contributed with nine points and six steals, with Jayla Galbraith lending her efforts with 10 assists along with her seven points. I think just, you know, supporting one another, working together. I mean, Anna and I are the old people, yeah. the ones that have been here all four years. So I think it starts from the leaders and going down. I would say we've been really hitting our shots lately. And Candace, Candace was really knocked down last night. Um, she was clutch for us. That clutch performance came in the final home game of the season versus Gallaudet as Butler not only scored nine points, but also became the fastest player in program history to record 1,000 career points, along with five rebounds, four assists, and two steals. In between that first and second quarter, we kind of had a talk saying, like, let's pick it up. We shouldn't be neck and neck with a team like this. So just little talks like that are at halftime in the locker room. We have to come out like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Despite losing to Gallaudet, the Lions secured two more wins in the regular season before losing to Morrisville State in the United East Tournament semifinal. The Harrisburg Lions put a cap on their season with a 16-9 record in improving fashion. At the Capitol Union Building, I'm Christopher Paul for Penn State Harrisburg Student Media. The Harrisburg Lions look forward to next season with more chances to improve during the offseason. Over spring break, the Penn State Harrisburg golf team opened their second half of the season with a tough loss against Swarthmore at the Pinehurst Resort in North Carolina. In the loss, Penn State Harrisburg's Andrew Fink would still play second overall in the match with a score of 76 strokes. The team, however, is coming off of a team title at the Rutgers Cayman Scarlet Raptor Fall Invitational back in October, where they placed first out of eight teams and the line's very own Matthew Redman placing third overall in the tournament. The golf team looks to add another title to their resume at the McDaniel Spring Invitational against the McDaniel Green Terror at the Bridges Golf Club in Abbottstown. Tea time is set for 8.30 a.m. I'm Casey Blask, and this has been my sports report. Make sure you check out the sports section in the Blue and White Journal. Now we head back to Brianna and Mitch. Thank you, Casey, for your sports report, and good luck to all our spring athletes. Another big event for students to look forward to this fall is class registration. Ooh, that reminds me, I need to schedule my classes for next semester. Aren't you graduating? Well, I don't know, I might need another semester. Well, if you haven't already, you should set up a meeting with your advisor in these coming weeks. What if I want to go to University Park? Once you declare your major, you can submit a change of campus request online path, and you better get to it. You're a few years late for 2 plus 2. Well, I'll get right on it. And hey, did you hear that THON was a big success this year? Yes, I did. The Penn State Harrisburg THON Committee joined other Penn State campuses at University Park for the big event. THON is a dance marathon that lasts for 46 hours. During the hours, the dancers are not allowed to sleep or sit while helping raise money for cancer treatment along with research. Through the event, the dancers also sing and enjoy live music. This year, THON raised over $13.7 million, breaking last year's record of $13.3 million. And, and it's, it's for, for the, the kids. kids. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show at the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media YouTube channel. Or on the new Blue and White Journal Student Newspaper Online site at pshblueandwhitejournal.com. 
For all of us here at Nittany Watch and WPSH-TV, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.